Here are 10 signs you need to get to the hospital as soon as humanly possible. If you think you're experiencing an emergency, please call 911 or your country's emergency equivalent. Now, if you are still unsure if you are experiencing a true medical emergency, never fear and get to the hospital immediately. I've put together a list of 10 reasons you or someone you love should get to the hospital. Number 10, trouble breathing. Not to scare you, but trouble breathing is very serious and we need to rule out the potential life-threatening causes for your sudden shortness of breath. As an ER doc, when I hear a patient is having a sudden onset of trouble breathing, there is a laundry list of medical conditions that could cause this that need to be ruled out, especially the bad ones. Things like having a heart attack, blood clot in the lungs, problems with your aorta, heart failure, infections in the airways, a normal level of oxygen in the body is usually 95% or higher. But if your oxygen levels drop below 90 to 95%, or you just feel uncomfortable and are having trouble catching your breath, definitely get to the hospital now. I repeat, definitely go to the hospital. Number nine reason you should go to the emergency department, chest pain. If you have chest pain that lasts longer than five minutes and doesn't go away, even when you rest or take medication and you're still having this pain, this could be an issue. Especially if you find that your chest pain is paired with shortness of breath, cold sweats, nausea, fatigue, lightheadedness, or any other pain that radiates out to the body parts like your arms, for instance. Your chest pain could be due to things like a heart attack, coronary occlusion, an aortic dissection, an aortic aneurysm, rib injury, anxiety, among many other serious life-threatening issues. If you or one of your loved ones thinks they can just ignore their sudden onset of chest pain or quote, work through it, don't be that person, please. Get to the emergency department. Number eight reason, displaced or open wound fractures. Fractures in doctor speak just means broken and displaced fractures can either be open or closed. When you break a bone, the skin is sometimes intact, AKA closed fracture, or if the bone breaks through the skin, that in doctor speak is called an open fracture. But no matter what you call it, if you break something in your body or have a suspicion you or someone you love broke a bone, seek medical attention right away. Then we'll decide whether you need to have it splinted, sling it, or whether you may require a reduction procedure or surgery to put the bones back in place. Get treated today and you'll minimize things like growth issues, arthritis, osteoporosis, and other pain in the future. Have you ever broken a bone? Let me know which one and let me know what your experience was like in the comments below. Number seven reason you should head to the ER, fainting or dizziness. Fainting is when you suddenly lose consciousness for a short period of time. You're talking, for example, doing something and then boom, the lights just go out and maybe you fall onto the floor. This is usually caused by a sudden drop in blood flow to your brain. Passing out or fainting can be caused by many different things, pain, being overheated, the sight of blood, anxiety, lots of different causes. But if a person you know faints in front of you, lay them down on the ground, definitely don't get them up too quickly because this could cause a person to faint again. Remember, it's that sudden blood pressure change. So stay low to the ground to avoid further injury. Also, make sure you call your doctor or head to the hospital because medically, we need to investigate whether or not there is a more serious underlying medical issue going on that is causing the fainting episodes. Number six reason to go to the emergency department, sudden numbness or weakness. Numbness in the body usually happens when there's a lack of blood supply to an area, nerve compression, or even nerve damage. Kind of feels like pins and needles in your body. That sudden feeling or numbness can also result from infection, inflammation, trauma, and other life-threatening issues like a stroke. Certainly, there are other neurologic conditions that may cause numbness, but my concern when I hear sudden numbness or weakness on one side of the body is always stroke. Come to think of it, I can't really feel anything on the left half of my body. This is very serious and could be potentially life-threatening. Strokes are the number five cause of death in the United States. They can occur when a blood vessel that carries oxygen and nutrients to the brain is either blocked by a clot or burst. When this happens, blood and oxygen can't get to that area of the brain and the brain cells start to die. So to avoid further complications or other potentially disabling outcomes, if you feel numbness or weakness in your body, play it safe and call 911 or seek immediate medical attention. Number five reason to get to the hospital, bleeding that cannot be stopped. Or if blood is spurting out of a wound anywhere from say trauma, an accident, 
or other unknown reason, you need to get to the hospital. This also goes for symptoms like coughing or vomiting blood, blood in the urine, bloody diarrhea, or you're pregnant and experiencing bleeding, and none of them have any good outcomes if the blood loss isn't stopped. Nevertheless, if severe hemorrhaging isn't stopped, a person could bleed to death in a short window of time. Number four, abdominal pain, especially intense localized pain. This is the single leading reason why people come to the emergency department actually about 12 million annual ER visits in the US each and every year for abdominal pain. So when to go to the hospital? If you have constant or severe abdominal pain or any pain paired with a fever, go to the hospital. Or if you have changes in pain intensity or location, for instance, does the pain go from a dull pain to a sharp stabbing pain or does your pain radiate to another area? If the answer is yes, go to the hospital. Also, increasing pain in a very specific spot is worthy of an ER visit as well. I'll give you some examples. If the right lower quadrant of your abdomen hurts, that usually indicates appendicitis, which needs to be seen in the hospital immediately. Left lower side of the abdomen, that usually could indicate diverticulitis or some issue or infection with the colon. Any specific area or any pain accompanied by another symptom, difficulty breathing, fever, or changes in behavior of the pain, get to the hospital stat. Number three, intense fever. First, let's define what a fever is a body temperature of over 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius is considered a fever and often a sign of infection in the body. If a child is under the age of three months and experiencing any elevated temperature, call your healthcare provider or head to the ER immediately. For anyone older than an infant, typically patients are told to come to the hospital when a fever is hitting or heading towards the 103 degree Fahrenheit or 39.4 degrees Celsius mark. Any higher body temperatures than that definitely come to the emergency department. Two, confusion or changes in mental status, AKA if a person is not acting or thinking like they normally would, get, get them to the hospital. hospital. If a person suddenly confused, disoriented, possibly agitated, or even having suicidal thoughts, you should immediately seek medical attention for any abrupt change in a person's mental status. Several serious medical conditions or even outside factors can cause changes in a seemingly healthy person. Number one reason to go to the emergency department, anything you're concerned about. Sometimes serious medical issues aren't that obvious. Maybe your symptoms are a little vague or maybe someone is telling you to just ride it out. This is where I have to disagree. Say a sudden onset headache, especially if someone is on blood thinners, seizure, sudden inability to speak or walk or move, sudden drooping on one side of the body, anything at all that seems suspicious or on the opposite end of the spectrum, symptoms or pain that just comes on out of the blue, that's what we call acute symptoms. Here's what it all boils down to. The symptoms that I've listed out are not a complete listing, but rather an overview or guideline to try and help you assess whether you or your loved one is at risk. So give yourself the peace of mind and either reach out to your healthcare provider, call 911 for an ambulance or get to the hospital immediately if you have any of these symptoms I've mentioned. All right, that's been a quick breakdown of some of the signs you should go to the ER. Certainly, there are a ton more. Let me know in the comments if you've ever made a trip to the emergency department, what was that experience like for you? If you enjoyed this video, definitely check out this playlist right here. And as always, make sure you subscribe to both channels. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.